Welcome back to Nucleotide Metabolism on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous videos of the playlist, we've seen the biosynthetic pathways for the pyrimidine nucleotides, which would include CTP and UTP. But in that time, we did not see yet how we actually get, in terms of nitrogenous bases, thymine. Now, in the video right before this one in the playlist, I showed you a summary of all the reactions that we have to do in order to get the nucleotide thymine as shown down here on the bottom right, and it is easier said than done. It's not just a simple matter of taking CTP or UTP and doing a couple of reactions and getting thymine. Rather, we're going to have to go through a series of three or four enzymes, and then we'll end up with this molecule, which is DUMP. And DUMP is the molecule which can directly be converted into DTMP, which possesses the thymine nitrogenous base. And the enzyme that accomplishes this is thymidylate synthase, which is a very important enzyme in, um, in, in medicinal chemistry. And we're going to talk about this on the next slide. But what I want to point your attention to is the substrate of this reaction, which is DUMP or deoxyUMP. So a couple of things about this. First of all, it has one phosphate. It's a monophosphate nucleotide, so only one phosphate. The nitrogenous base is uracil, and we've already exchanged the ribose for its deoxy form, deoxyribose. That was accomplished by the enzyme here, ribonucleotide reductase. Now we're going to look and see what happens when we convert DUMP into D. TMP, all right? And again, that's catalyzed by thymidylate synthase. Now, before we go into this next slide to look at the reaction, I want to point your attention to one thing about thymidylate synthase that's very important to understand. Uh, this enzyme will only act uh, when if this is a deoxynucleotide. So it will not work if it's just simple UMP. It has to be deoxyUMP, which makes sense because we're forming the nitrogenous base thymine, which is only incorporated into DNA, and as we know, DNA has the has the two prime OH group removed, therefore it's deoxyribose. So that makes sense. The other thing is this enzyme thymidylate synthase will only react with the monophosphate form of the deoxyuracil nucleotide. So if you had DUDP or DUTP, it will not react with those two versions. It has to be the monophosphate version. Okay? And so that's why the product of this is deoxy-TMP. And what we'll see at some point is that it's going to take two phosphorylation reactions to get this up to DTTP, which can then be uh, imported into the nucleus and used in uh, DNA replication. All right, so here's the general reaction of thymidylate synthase. We're going to take this molecule, which is DUMP, and it's going to convert it into DTMP. All right. So again, we have the monophosphate, the deoxyribose ring, and notice, as we probably have seen before, the only difference here is uracil uh, does not have a methyl group right here at this corner position, whereas in thymine, we obviously do have a methyl group. And so the reaction of thymidylate synthase is going to add that methyl group. Now, here's the reaction here at the top. We have deoxyUMP, and thymidylate synthase converts that into DTMP. In this case, the methyl donor is actually not s methionine. It's actually N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. So this uh, form of folate is going to be is going to come from uh, folate metabolism. We have a video on that that I recommend you go watch. But this is going to donate the one carbon that's going to become this methyl group. And in the process, N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate is converted into 7,8-dihydrofolate, sometimes just referred to as dihydrofolate. This is the uh, dihydrofolate that is the precursor to all tetrahydrofolates. Now, this dihydrofolate is going to go through a couple of reactions to get back to N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. Dihydrofolate will be reduced to tetrahydrofolate, shown here, by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. And notice that this reaction is going to consume an NADPH in order to perform this reduction. So dihydrofolate gets converted to tetrahydrofolate. 
Now we have this enzyme here, serine hydroxymethyltransferase. This is an enzyme that we see in uh, serine catabolism and also glycine synthesis, if you want to look at it that way. It's a, a pyridoxal phosphate dependent enzyme in which tetrahydrofolate is converted back into N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. And so the purpose of this cycle really is to keep generating this form of tetrahydrofolate, which is going to be able to donate its one carbon to DUMP to make D. TMP. And this is going to be very, very important. Again, this is the reaction of thymidylate synthase right here that we're really concerned with is DUMP into DTMP. Again, in order to form the triphosphate form, DTMP is going to have to be phosphorylated twice. Each phosphorylation is going to be a different enzyme. We'll look at that in another video. But there's a couple other aspects of this that I want to talk about, and that is the, the inhibition of a couple of these enzymes. It turns out that in terms of treating cancer, it's very effective, or it has been very effective in the past, to target these two enzymes, thymidylate synthase and dihydrofolate reductase. And the reason being is if you think about uh, cells like cancer are actively dividing. If you have a cell that's actively dividing, it's metastasized and so forth, it has to replicate its DNA in order to divide. So if you can shut down the replication of DNA, you can potentially in theory, slow down the spreading of the cancer, okay? And in order to replicate your DNA, you need Ts, thymines, and you need DTTP. And to get that, you need DTMP. So this pathway is really going to shut the synthesis of DTMP down, but we're doing it at two different locations. The first enzyme we're going to talk about targeting is dihydrofolate reductase, and some drugs that you may have heard of, probably the most common one is methotrexate, but also aminoterins and trimethoprim, these are molecules that, uh, two of which are shown here, that actually structurally resemble the dihydrofolate molecule. Um, we have this terin right here that's present in methotrexate, and it's able to get into the active site of dihydrofolate reductase and inhibit this reduction. And if you can't complete the cycle, you're not really going to get back to the N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate, and if you don't have sufficient amounts of this, you're not going to be able to make sufficient amounts of thymine, as in DTMP. And so this is the first enzyme that is targeted for anti-cancer purposes. The second enzyme that we're going to talk about, and we'll go to the next slide on this, is actually the thymidylate synthase. It's kind of moved up here. And the, the classical inhibitor of thymidylate synthase is actually a suicide inhibitor. It's a prodrug called fluorodeoxyUMP. Now, the normal substrate for this enzyme thymidylate synthase, as we know, is deoxyUMP, D-U-M-P. So fluorodeoxyUMP is shown right here. It has a fluorine at this position that would ordinarily receive the methyl group after the reaction of this enzyme is over. So it's just fluorouracil. Now fluorouracil by itself doesn't do any good, so it has to be processed by a number of enzymes. So obviously you'd have to get the ribose ring on this. So that's a phosphoribosyl transferase. That gives us this molecule right here. Um, then I'm going to phosphorylate, uh, give it a second phosphate here. That's going to give me the diphosphate. Okay. So this is fluoroUDP. Remember that ribonucleotide reductase only reacts with the diphosphate forms of nucleotides. So this fluoroUDP just becomes fluorodeoxyUDP. Okay. And then we need to get this up to the triphosphate form. So this will react with, first of all, NDPK. That will give it a third phosphate right here. And then we'll use DUTPase. Again, we're really just following the series of enzymes right here. Okay, And that will give us ultimately the active form of this drug, which is fluorodeoxyUMP. That's what this molecule is right here. Now, I'm not going to show you the mechanism of how this actually uh, acts as a suicide inhibitor of thymidylate synthase. But basically what it does, if you're not familiar with suicide inhibitors, is this molecule looks pretty much exactly like DM DUMP from the perspective of the enzyme. Fluorine replaces what is a hydrogen in DUMP. And fluorine is about the same size as hydrogen from the enzyme's point of view. And so the enzyme can't tell the difference. And so in the mechanism of this enzyme, this uh, uracil ring is actually going to get covalently bound to the enzyme through a cysteine residue. 
And ultimately, because of this fluorine, it can't become unattached. And so ultimately, this just becomes ligated to the enzyme, and it kills the enzyme's activity. So fluorodeoxyUMP is actually a very, very good example of a prodrug who becomes a mechanistic inhibitor an irreversible suicide inhibitor. Um, and you really have to look at the mechanism of thymidylate synthase to really understand it, which we will do in another video. But it suffices to say for now that fluorodeoxyUMP is a very good inhibitor of thymidylate synthase, except this inhibitor, unlike the three down here that we looked at on the previous slide, this fluorodeoxyUMP directly inhibits the production of DTMP because it's inhibiting the enzyme that actually makes it directly. Okay, And again, this type of drug would often be used to treat cancer. Um, it actually is still used to some extent, although there have been many that have replaced it since. All right, so hopefully this video gave you a little bit of intuition on the, the cycle by which we can generate DTMP, or just the thymine if we're considering that. And hopefully you understand that this enzyme not only requires the DUMP, but it also requires a one carbon donation from N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate. And this pathway also, as you can see, integrates folate metabolism and serine catabolism. All right, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.